two videos in one day. Folks, I'm on a roll. I do have exams coming up next week. If you're in college, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to cram as many of these videos as I can into the end of this week because I won't be able to upload many next week. But I'm trying not to compromise on quality at the same time. It's a big tug of war. Uh, but I do have an AMD FX8300 built to show you. I'm going to show you exactly how to build one and in about three minutes or less. If you don't think it's possible, try me. First up, gather your parts. Pull out your motherboard, place it on its box, and prepare a CPU for the marriage. Align the socket properly, lift the retention lever, and gently set the CPU into the socket. After ensuring that it's fitted properly, lower the retention arm. It'll require a bit of force. If you're using the stock cooler, hinge both sides of the metal beam under the black mounted supports, and then twist the black lever on the beam a full 180 degrees to secure it into place. Connect the fan to the fan header called CPU Fan. Release DIMM brackets 2 and 4 for a dual channel array, align your DDR3 memory, and force each module into place. The brackets should realign themselves upright when the RAM is secure. Next, prepare your tower for the merge. Fasten the rear I.O. panel, it can be a bit tricky, and then slide your motherboard into place within your case using the CPU cooler as a sort of handle. Once it's properly aligned, secure the board with the included case screws. Grab a hold of your power supply, connect it to the mounting bracket if your case has one, and slide it into the opening down the back. At this point, I like to funnel my larger cables through their respective holes in the chassis. Plug in the 24-pin motherboard power cable as well as the 4 or 8-pin CPU power cable. Now take your front I.O. connectors, locate their headers on the motherboard, and plug positive into positive, negative into negative. Use your motherboard's manual if things become difficult. Do the same for the HD audio header and any USB 2.0 connectors. USB 3.0 should appear blue, has its own special header. Mount your storage devices to the chassis and run a SATA cable from one end into the drive and from another into a SATA port on the motherboard. Plug in any case fans at this point and add any more if necessary. Connect SATA or Molex power to your storage devices, fan headers, LED kits, etc. Next, clear out two PCI slot covers, grab your graphics card, and secure it into the uppermost PCIe 16X slot. Plug in PCIe power that you added earlier and secure the card to your chassis in the back. Finish up anything you may have forgotten, an LED kit in our instance, and end your adventure by cable managing as best you can in the back of the case before fastening the left and right panels back to the chassis. There you have it folks, sorry I have to talk fast because I'm trying to keep this video under 3 minutes for the sake of being able to put it in the title. If you liked the video be sure to give it a thumbs up, if you didn't give it a thumbs down, and uh, let me know why in the comments below. Be sure to suggest future videos also in the comments, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for future videos. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us. Whew.